Could I ask Michelle come to come up to ask her a question, please? Thank you. On the 23rd of August, the Council published its 2017 Nuneaton and Bedworth Air Quality Annual Status Report. This is based on the 2016 air quality measurements from diffusion tubes and the highly accurate automatic monitoring station. The legal limit for nitrous dioxide pollution is an annual mean value of 40 micrograms per square metre. However, there is a significant health impact well below this level. It is estimated that around 64 people are dying earlier than they would otherwise do so each year in the borough with our current level of pollution. The figures show that nitrous dioxide pollution at the automatic monitoring station rose from 32.4 to 36.2 micrograms per square me um, cubic metre in 2016. That is a significant 12% increase compared to 2015. The Council is allowing thousands more homes to be built north of Nuneaton over the next decade and we have two new supermarkets opening this year nearby. It is expected that traffic around the gyratory could increase by up to 50%. The Council has discontinued the use of the automatic monitoring station just when traffic levels are expected to rise sharply. It has also significantly stopped regular monitoring of curbside emissions on Hinkley Road. At one location at the old Hinkley Road curbside, the concentration of nitrous dioxide is often between 60 and 70 micrograms per cubic metre over a month. Things are even worse at Corporation Street Stroke Mid Midland Road. The monitoring shows levels above the legal limit of nitrous dioxide still persist at some locations. Sites NB27, NB29 and NB30 have annual averages of 40 or above. My husband has obtained raw diffusion tube data for the first half of 2017 using the Freedom of Information Act. This data shows a considerable increase over the same raw data for 2016. Without our Council's automatic monitoring station, it is not easy to establish how real this increase is. Why is it that the Council is continuing to mothball the automatic monitoring station and refusing to monitor curbside nitrous dioxide pollution directly, given the worrying trends? Thank you. Council monitors and reports on air quality in a way that fully meets the requirements of the National Air Quality Strategy. It's a fully compliant monitoring programme and keeps us under review and ensures it's fit for purpose. We do not monitor short-term curb, curbside nitrogen dioxide concentrations because it does not exceed the air quality objective. A nationally recognised suitable alternative is now available to achieve the purpose of the automatic monitoring station, so there is no longer a need to sustain the cost of £5,000 per year to run it. There are no worrying trends of air quality in this borough. <coughs> the only area that monitoring and assessment has ever identified as being of concern is long-term nitrogen dioxide concentrations at the front of people's homes. In 2008, there were exceedances at several locations at levels up to 25% higher than the air quality objective. In 2016, there was only one exceedance at the location on Midland Road at a level of 10% above the air quality objective. In fact, this is such an improvement that DEFRA, the government department that oversees national air quality strategy, has recommended that we revoke the air quality management area at Leicester Road Gyratory System, because it is no, now no longer since sorry now so long since there's any exceedance of the air quality objective in that area. Furthermore, the analysis we've done to assess the effects on air quality of the of the borough plan found that by the end of the plan period, there will no longer be any exceedances of air quality objectives anywhere in the borough. <coughs> These positive trends are identified through analysis by independent experts using the prescribed scientific methods. As an addendum to that, Mr Chairman, I am somewhat, I've said it before, I'm somewhat concerned about, about the tone of some of the questions and some of the information within it. The figure of 64, 64 people dying earlier is based on a national figure uh, across the country of people dying prematurely. 
is then divided by a number of areas and you end up with this one, 64. There is no direct evidence that 64 people in this borough have died as a direct result of the air quality within the borough. In fact, a lot of people have pre-existing conditions like myself, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary disease, COPD, and around the borough we know we have the health health inequalities uh, with uh, lung and heart disease. Uh, so, whilst this may be a contributory factor, can I stress that these people do not die as a direct result of air quality within this borough? And I think I might need to make that clear because these, these, these figures are going out publicly and I want to throw that to myth. To the, to the it is not a myth. Do you not so, believe Public Health England? Mrs. So, Mrs. Condicle, please have the respect. I'm just being, I'm just I don't Condicle. believe a word Mrs. that I'm being told. I'm Mrs. sorry. Mrs. Condicle. Well, can I suggest, Chair, yeah, that uh, the questioner, uh, as well as questioning this council on these things, actually gets all the death for her. If she doesn't believe what we're saying here, she's fully, she's fully, fully told to go to death for her and find out what they say. Death is not for the purpose. Could I have...